This video is sponsored by Deep Cut Studios. For a wide range of fantastic gaming resources such as battle mats, dice trays and pre-painted bases, check out the description below. Hi guys and welcome back to TNG Productions. My name is Tom and in this video we're going to be looking at some Lord of the Rings miniatures as we have a look at Games Workshop's Middle Earth strategy battle game and we're going to be going with the forces of Isengard and these Auric High Scout Troopers. Now if you've not encountered these tutorials before they're essentially aimed at people like me who don't necessarily love the painting part of the hobby while well, not as much as the gaming part. So this is designed to give you a quick and easily replicatable paint job that will allow you to bash through an army or a battle company in no time at all using the Citadel contrast range of paints from Games Workshop. So here is our main trooper we're going to be using. He's been undercoated with Wraithbone. It looks quite bright under these lights, but I can assure you it's Wraithbone. That being said, grey seal or any light or white undercoat will do the job. Essentially something light because the contrast paints want to be able to show the colour underneath to pop those highlights. Now as for the Orakai flesh, as many of you will know who've seen the films, there's a great variety of flesh tones in the Orakai. Some of them are dark, some of them are real reddy colour, especially like the Berserkers and that. So Fire Slayer flesh is the darker of the contrast paints, but it is also a nice even dark tone, meaning that if you want to dry brush it with a different colour later, which we will be, it will show that colour on the highest parts, but you'll have this nice deep flesh tone in the recesses. Now, as with all the paints we're going to be using in this tutorial, I actively encourage you to ignore Games Workshop's advice and just their general contrast videos at all because they're terrible. But do not apply it in a thick coat. Apply it in a nice, even coat as you would a shade wash. Same goes for this snake bite leather. Now, if you apply this too heavily, it'll be a very, very dark tone. And this is simply just to sit on the under tunics that these uh, Orakai Scouts have. Now, if you're painting up the main Orakai forces that assault Isengard, so that assault Helm's Deep even, uh, they don't have these under tunics. You can skip this step. But for the Scouts, they have this under kind of garment and then a heavy overcoat. Now the heavy overcoat is going to be done in Wildwood. Now this is a colour you have to be very careful with because if you apply it too thickly it will come out a black colour where it pulls. So you can see me choosing segment by segment to fill in, not loading my brush up too heavy and allowing to get a nice even coverage before I move on to the next areas. Now take care when you're going around the face and the mask area that will under flap the uh, helmet as you don't want to kind of blotch this on. But if you make any mistakes at all, simply use some of the wraith bone out the pot, go back over and reapply your color to that segment or that section of the miniature. And as you can see with this nice deep brown color that's already covered about 90% of the miniature because these jackets are so thick. Now we're going to go to my favourite trick, we're going to use Black Templar for the metallics to start with. This will allow us to then dry brush with a more silvery colour later, which produces this really nice, orky, dark, metallic, kind of beaten, weathered metal look. So this is again going to be a nice even coat over on the shield, on the breastplate. We're going to go on the legs and the armour that's there and also any swords. Now if you're applying this to an archer, you can do the exact same on the bow. And same with the banner bearer that I showed you in the intro, that was just Black Templar applied as well. Just making sure we get a nice even coverage and as the contrast paint kind of pulls and stretches across the areas, we make sure there's no kind of light colour showing through, that we've got everything nicely coated with an even tone. And that's essentially our miniature base coated. If you were really trying to rinse through these models, I think you could call that tabletop ready, but we're going to take it a little bit further. And the first thing we're going to do is bring those tones together with a slight deepening with Agrax Earthshade Wash. Now again, this is a relatively light wash. I'm not overloading my brush. I just want to make sure I get everything, the skin, the tunics and the metallics nicely covered with this deep brown colour. And what that will do is bring it together and allow us a base for which we can dry brush later on. Now, if it does pull in any areas, just make sure you pull it away while it's drying to avoid any kind of over darkness or over cartoony saturation. Now, as mentioned earlier, we could talk about the flesh tone. Now, to give it that ready hint that you sometimes see, we're going to be using Tuscor Fur, and this is going to be a very, very, very light dry brush. So, getting the majority of paint off the brush to just highlight the areas of musculature to give it that slight ready tone or even almost like a kind of sunburny colour. And we're going to be doing the same with the tunic, and for that, we're going to be using Gorthor Brown. Now, this is going to go over all of that Wildwood area, and you might want to do one or two coats with this, depending on how much of a highlight you want, how stark you want to make it. As with all dry brushing, you get more off your brush and then apply it sparingly. Less is more, and it's better to be able to correct it by adding more than trying to reduce it if you've put too much on in the first place. And that will give all those brown areas a really nice pop. Now with all contrast paints, they really like having a unified dry brush over the top. So for us, we're going to be using a bone colour in a shabti bone. 
and this will go over all of the brown features that we have highlighted. So the tunic, the undergarment, the big coat. You could even use a little bit of this on the flesh if you wanted to have a really pronounced area like the knuckles maybe or the elbow. But that will bring it all together with this nice light highlight and you can see that deep wildwood has now got a little bit of trans transition in terms of the colours. Finally, with Black Templar, we're going to be using some lead belcher over the top. You could use any silver that you fancy, and we're going to be using this in circular and side-to-side -side motions to try and give this idea of like a beaten pattern. Now, be very careful with the chest plate because you don't want to be getting silver all over those brown areas, but for the helmet, the armor, and the greaves on the legs, it's nice and easy. Just give a decent to moderate coverage, allowing some of that black to shine through so it looks like that kind of beaten material. And then all you've got left to do is to do your basing and presentation. So for this one, nice bit of sterling mud, nice bit of status grass, uh, grass, grass even, and some blood for the blood guard just to make him gourd up a little. And essentially, this model will take you maybe, excluding drying time, about 30 minutes to paint. So you can batch paint a load of them. So you can see I've got a variety here just to show you. We've got the trooper from earlier on, we've got an archer, and we've got a warrior that is not wielding a shield. And you can go as heavy as you want with the blood for the blood guard, or as light as you want but as you can see this is a really simple quick recipe and if you've not seen it yet you can have a look at our ambush at Amon Hen battle report where I think I've got about 20 odd of these guys all painted up so hopefully that's been useful for you all and I hope you've enjoyed this video if you've got any questions pop them into the comments below and I will see you in the next one hi guys thank you very much for watching our content it means the world to us if you'd like to see some more videos they should be over here and if you'd like to support our channel keep these lights on you can find links to our patreon and merchandise in the description below see you later